Ryan, uh, which is going to have huge consequences if this hospital is going to have a crack in the key cost. Thank you. So in case you don't know, in TSMR, we represent women, couples and pregnant people who were diagnosed with a severe or fatal anomaly in pregnancy in Ireland. After diagnosis, some people travel to end their pregnancy, while others remain pregnant and wait for their baby to pass away without medical intervention. Because of the Eighth Amendment, the people who we represent did not receive the care that they needed. But because the people of Ireland voted overwhelmingly to repeal the Eighth, this can now change. Together, we repeal the Eighth Amendment, and as legislation passes through the houses of the Oireachtas, we look forward to a future where families in these situations will have all options open to them regarding the information and health care that they receive in our maternity hospitals and GP clinics across this country. It is clear that Ireland and the Irish people have moved beyond the Magdalen laundries, the mother and baby homes and the shaming of people in crisis pregnancy. When legislation is enacted, we look forward to an Ireland where no publicly funded hospital our healthcare provider will deny women access to healthcare or information to which they are legally entitled to. For us in TFMR, it is critical that the care and compassion that won over hearts and minds during the recent referendum must be present in all of our maternity services across the entire country. Our national maternity hospital and all of our publicly funded hospitals must be free to operate without influence, interference or obstruction of religious ethos from individuals or institutions. We need to ensure that all women and pregnant people receive compassionate, non-judgmental information and health care to which they are legally entitled and that access to this health care is free, safe, legal, local and accessible to all who need it across all of our maternity services in every corner of Ireland. Thank you very much. Uh, we've still quite a number of speakers and I know that everybody's been standing. Our next speaker is Emma Allen from the Abortion Rights Campaign. Uh, so Anna, Emma, thank you very much. to important demonstration and show solidarity and strength for our national maternity hospital and our health care. It's been over six months since Ireland voted for free, safe, legal and local abortion services. It's time everyone got real about repeal. Since May 25th, 1,926 people have had to leave Ireland to access an abortion. 642 have had to take pills alone and unsupported by their doctors. We've watched as the legislative process moves slowly along. We've worked to make sure as many people as possible um, can access the care they need at home. It's been over six months and now we're seeing people say we should wait even longer. Pregnant people cannot wait. How many more people should have to travel? How many more people should have to go through the ordeal of airports and flights and clinics abroad instead of their hospitals and clinics at home? Crisis pregnancies happen every single day in Ireland. Not everyone can travel. Not everyone can buy pills online. People need free, safe, legal and local abortion care and they can't afford to wait for it. It is time to get real. It's time to put pregnant people back at the heart of the issue. It's time for sensible, patient-centred care. It's time for free, safe, legal and local abortion services. We repeal the eight and so far nothing has changed. We were promised delivery of services yeah. on January 1st. There cannot be delays, not in our health care. We won't stand for it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Emma. Um, 
Now our next speaker is Anne Conway, who was one of the founding members of this campaign. Uh, and Anne is going to say a few words on behalf of the campaign. Thanks, Anne. Okay. Uh, firstly, I'm going to read a statement from the Christine Buckley Support and Education Centre. I went to visit that centre yesterday and it was a very emotional moment. So the Christine Buckley Centre is an education and support centre for survivors and they've issued this statement to make our National Maternity Hospital public for our rally today. They say that many clients attend the centre are survivors of abuse at the hands of the Sisters of Charity. We know that children were the victims of severe corporal punishment even into the 1990s. The Sisters of Charity never issued a public apology to the children incarcerated in five residential schools operated by them. The Sisters of Charity also operated Magdalene laundries where women were forced to live and walk in inhuman conditions without pay. Once again, the Sisters of Charity have not apologised. They have also not contributed financially to the redress team. If the Sisters of Charity cannot acknowledge, apologise and learn from the past, how can we expect them to behave differently in terms of the ethos and understanding the needs of women for the new National Maternity Hospital? Just to point myself from the campaign, we are here today to send a simple message to Minister Harris. You have no mandate to continue negotiations on the future of the new maternity hospital. The only people you should be negotiating with are the 66.4% who voted yes in, this, in the repeal movement. It is in flagrant disregard of this massive yes vote. And it's an unspeakable betrayal of the survivors of abuse to continue negotiations with an order with such a criminal past as the Irish Sisters of Charity. We call today for an ending of the negotiations and to talk directly to the people of this country and he, Minister Harris should know exactly what we want. We want a public hospital on public land with a secular, with, with a secular constitution. They can play around with words about who owns the new hospital. They can say what they wish but we know that the Irish Sisters of Charity ethos will prevail. The Christine Buckley Education Centre, the statement I've just read, their order, they've committed orders against these people, against the victims. And these are crimes against humanity. These are crimes should not be rewarded with a public hospital, with a second, with, with, a, with a private hospital. The minister is trying to convince us that any medical procedure in accordance with the law of the land would be carried out in the new hospital. Why would we believe this? There's not a hospital in the world, that a Catholic hospital in the world that performs abortion. Is the minister and his supporters trying to convince us that the Sisters of Charity might not be Catholic? Do they want us to believe the nuns are prepared to allow abortions? in a hospital built on what remains their land or did an abortion occur in a group, a group of hospitals in which they are the main shareholders. It's absolutely fascinating. You might ask, is the Pope a Catholic? <laughs> the Pope's opinion on abortion, he said them recently, is the same as hiring a gun man, a hit man, to kill someone. That is our opinion of women. So we're putting out a call to action today and we know we're up against powerful forces. But we are the majority and we've had enough of church control. The media is not giving us balanced coverage. The campaign has come under a sustained attack in the media in the last couple of weeks and our responses have not been printed. The deal is particularly a huge scandal because it rewards the perpetrators of previous scandals. The known to run the matter in laundry and erase it their fight for justice as survivors has been of little consequence in these backdoor dealings and the subverts the repeal vote. And I want to add that we've come on a huge pressure this week that we're holding up the hospital. Well, that's a laughable statement. We're the, the government with the nuns and the Sisters of Charity and the National Maternity Hospital and St. Vincent. They have been in negotiations for years. They 
are the people who are holding up the hospital. Not us. And I want to make that point clear to Brian O'Mahony when I heard her this morning talking on the radio. We all want decent health care. We all, many of us here have children. We want to go into a hospital that is the state of the art. We do not want to go into a hospital that's run by a Catholic ether. We demand that you support our basic and just demand for a hospital system public money to be publicly owned and controlled and not fed by a private religious corporation. We voted for choice and choice is what we want and what we're going to get. Don't take us for granted. We are standing for democracy. We know what we voted for. We didn't vote for any shoddy backdoor deals or golden shares or uh, special interest directors at the board. We voted for our services, for abortion rights and fertility issues to be actually dealt with in a public hospital under secular control. So we're calling on the young people who are the driving force behind the repeal movement to come on board, to show that we will not accept any shoddy deals, concocted by the government, by the state, and by private consultants who are interested in, in their golden share in the new hospital. We need the energy and enthusiasm of this youth. And we, will, we need to take back the old slogan, which I know as a woman who campaigned for these issues 50 years ago. Not the church, not the state. Women will decide their fate. And finally, I'd like to sort of say, we need to take whatever action we need to, up to and including occupying the site. And we know, and we know that we had Kira Kelly, Dr. Kira Kelly, saying she would lie in front of a bulldozer when we be there with you, Kira. There's going to be no more deals behind our backs. We've had enough and we're not going to accept any more. This is the end of church control. We are going to make sure that this hospital is going to be our hospital, our maternity hospital. And the final thing I would say is Terry O'Brien. Uh, Tony O'Brien started this morning, was quoted in an article. Now Tony O'Brien has no hand back to part to pay in this. So why is he, it appears like he's giving them some advice. But Tony O'Brien left disgraced from the health HSE. So he should keep away and no comments to make about this new hospital. Thank you. Fantastic, Ann. Not the church, not the state, women will decide our fate. Not the church, not the state, women will decide our fate. Not the church, not the state, women will decide our fate. Right. And just before we have um, a speaker from the Union of Students of Ireland, just to say that um, Anne, you know, we've great respect for her because she's been campaigning on issues like this for 40 years, over 40 years. You know, so this brings it around. Campaigners have been campaigning a long time on these issues. Absolutely. Um, okay, our next speaker is Amy Schwein from the Workers' Party who uh, took a very high profile last year to raise awareness around, well actually to bring demonstrations around uh, the issue when it was announced that the government was accepting the Mulder report. So Eilish, thank you. I love the elegance at the beginning of these demonstrations. Um, thank you so much and just like um, Donna said, I just want to say a particular thanks to Anne Conway who um, I think a lot of us either believe this issue had been resolved or that this issue had um, we had been lost. And Anne the whole time kept a full eye on the fact that neither of those things is true. This hospital is still up for grabs, it's still up for us to own and we certainly haven't won anything yet. So a massive well done to Anne Conway for getting this off the ground. My name is Ailish Ryan, I'm a councillor with the Workers' Party. I'm going to make three really, really short points. Um, the first is a response to the cost that this hospital would cost us to public ownership. Over the last 10 years, our state have given healthcare companies owned by the Sisters of Mercy and the Sisters of Charity 8 billion euro to run their hospitals. All of that money has gone into private institutions run by private codes of conduct 
by a private ethos with no control by the state. So in terms of money, they're the ones who owe us on a whole load of different levels. I think I'm getting electrocuted by the way. Um, the second point that I would like to make is about why exactly it is that a Fine Gael government trying to build its reputation on being so-called liberal um, are not are, are interested in handing a hospital over to the, 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 a religious order. Um, my view is that at the end of the day, very little of this had to do with religion anymore. It has far more to do with the fact that this country has been run for decades by right-wing ideologues who are absolutely intent on privatising our education system, our transport system and our healthcare system and our social housing. That's the agenda that is driving Simon Harris. Simon Harris is not coming out defending religious ownership of hospitals. He's doing everything in his power to ensure that nobody thinks he's owned by a religious order because he knows that's not popular anymore. But what a Fine Gael government are refusing to do is take a hospital into public ownership to be run by us, the people. And that is what we're fighting for with this campaign. So just a f very final point that I want to make um, is for me, this hospital is the first in a long list of hospitals that need to be taken out of religious ownership. A religious ethos does not just determine issues around women's health care. As medicine control, I have one personal friend who um, there's a potential that a particular stem cell treatment could renew her sight. She's somebody who lost her sight some time ago. And a number of hospitals in Ireland are refusing to do research on this because they believe stem cell surgery goes against their ethos. The number of areas of modern medicine that will be prevented from taking place in um, religiously controlled hospitals is growing every single day. So I can't this campaign, and as it continues, I hope that we spread it out to every single hospital um, owned by a private organisation or a religious body in this country. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Eilish. Um, and again, just to reiterate uh, what uh, a number of speakers have said, in particular Glenn Conway. We really need people to get involved in this campaign. We have the government on the run. They know they're in a jam. They know they've messed this up in enormous proportion. And how they're going to get out of this is going to be really dependent on whether there are people on the ground saying, no way you're going to hand this over. Um, our next speaker is Ashling Cusack from the USI. Uh, The Union of Students in Ireland have campaigned for decades for reproductive health care and abortion access in Ireland. And on the 25th of May this year, students travelled to the ballot box in their thousands. 87% of 18 to 24 year olds voted yes, overwhelmingly. We didn't vote yes to later see prohibitions come into place. We didn't vote yes to later see the grounds we voted on to be watered down. The campaign for abortion access in this country does not stop with a repeal of the Eighth Amendment. It does not stop when legislation goes through the door. It does not stop till every pregnant person in this country who needs an abortion can access one, and access one safely and without judgment and Catholic guilt. In order to make sure the progress that we have made, we must ensure that care and compassion is embedded in our hospitals and in our healthcare services. Those services must be publicly owned and independent from any religious ethos or influence. We have seen times when the Catholic Church has run things in this country. The Vita Halepanaver in 2012 lost her life at a time when this country was far more silent on this issue. It was said that this is a Catholic country. We don't do that here. We are not silent now. Why is this important? On the 26th of May, we woke up to a new Ireland. An Ireland who listens, a compassionate Ireland. An Ireland who wants to look after those in crisis. If Minister Simon Harris goes ahead with this deal, we are turning back the clock. We are going back in time. We haven't forgotten how we have been treated by the church in this country. We haven't forgotten about the Magdalene Laundry. We haven't been forgotten about the women who have traveled, who are traveling now. We won't go back to that time. Public funding should mean public ownership. And we will not stand for Simon Harris to be gifting the Sisters of Charity a Christmas present for 350 million of our money. It's our money and it should be our hospital. Thank you.
That's fantastic. Thank you, uh, Ashley. Um, right, we have just three more speakers, and I know everybody is really standing. Maybe four. Okay. Next speaker is uh, is, is Ruth Coppinger. Uh, I don't need to introduce Ruth. So well known uh, from the. From